My name is Bassam Thibi. Uh, I was born in Damascus and uh, grew up there. Uh, I descend from an aristocrat aristocratic family. Uh, Ashraf in Arabic means aristocracy. And so my family uh, is the Ashraf of Damascus. Uh, in the age of 18, I left to Germany to study. Uh, and actually, I was supposed to return to Syria and uh, adopt uh, the business of my father. My father was a millionaire and a contractor. But then uh, the Alawis came to power, 1970, and uh, the return to Syria was cut, so I stayed in the West. And I made a career as a professor. I wrote a book uh, with the question, uh, Europa une identité, Europe without identity, to me, but also to serious researchers, uh, Europe uh, is a civilization. Europe is based on civilization. And every civilization has, has its own values and also civilizational identity. So the fact uh, that Europe is a civilization uh, leads to the conclusion that uh, this civilization has its own identity and values as well. So I do not discuss this because this is a reality. And those who dis, uh, um, question European identity, they are uh, against this identity. And so they want to destroy it. And as a migrant, uh, I enjoy the freedom European provides me with. And I want to preserve this identity. Freedom is part of this identity. Islamic values are alien to Europe. Yeah? Uh, for example, uh, the image of man and the, the image of woman in Islam ran counter to the image in Europe. Because in Islam, as the Quran prescribes, men are superior to women. Uh, this uh, cannot be accepted in Europe because uh, the European value for this is gender equality, equality between man and woman. Uh, another field is uh, the relation between Muslims and non-Muslims. Uh, in the European system, all, religion, all religions are equals, and uh, the uh, members of religious communities, different religious communities, are all equal uh, in front of the law. This is not the case of Islam. Sharia, this is Islamic law, distinguishes between believer and unbeliever, uh, between first-class believer and second-class believer, and this cannot be accepted in Europe. So we have to be there honest and clear about this. Uh, I am a Muslim, and I belong to a group of Muslims who engage in reforming Islam. Like, I think it is possible Islamic values uh, which descends from the 7th century, can be reconsidered, reformulated, and rethought in our age, so to give them new meaning, like, I go for the equality between man and woman, gender equality. I go, though a Muslim, I go for the equality of Muslims with non-Muslims. Uh, here in the West, uh, some people of a good willing, they want uh, uh, to look at things and uh, acknowledge their guilt. They feel guilty, and they feel guilty for the colonialism which intruded the world of Islam. And they explain all evils that are now occurring in the world of Islam as a result of Western colonialism. So the West is responsible for what is going on now in the world of Islam. This is a stupid argument. Yeah? Uh, the problem is not only colonialism. Uh, there is a crisis of Islamic civilization. Islamic civilization has been expanding from the 7th to the 17th century, 1,000 years, successfully. And with the rise of the West, with the rise of modern science and the rise of modern technology, Islamic expansion will stop. So this is not colonialism. This is uh, the uh, competition between two models of globalization the Islamic model of globalization, of expanding house of Islam to, uh, to cover the entire world, 
and uh, the new model of Western Europe. This is not Christianity. This is uh, modernity. This is a secular modernity. Secular modernity means se also the separation between religion and politics. Uh, there is a German sociologist. Uh, this is one of the top scholars in the last century. His name is Max Weber. And he interpreted secularization as this enchantment of the world. That means uh, people explain everything rationally with reference to science and to technology. This is not the case in the world of Islam. In the world of Islam, when it rains, that this is uh, the presence of God, if it doesn't rain and the agriculture is not doing well, then God is punishing the people because they should have done some evil. Um, uh, a modern person, uh, knowledgeable about science would not accept these interpretations. Say if it rains or if it doesn't, these are processes in the nature that can be explained with science and technology. So here you have you have conflicts between a civilization with, which is pre-modern, pre-industrial, pre-rational, and a civilization uh, characterized by rationality and secularization. Secularization not only means the separation between religion and politics, uh, secularization also means rationalizing the world. Today, and since last century, Islam is coming back to the fore. Islam disappeared from the fore uh, for maybe one or two centuries. Yeah? Uh, for many reasons, I mean, if you want, we can talk about this, but uh, Islam is returning, that's why uh, one of the greatest scholars of Islamic studies, his name is uh, uh, his name is Bernard Lewis. He coined the term the return of Islam, and this is not the return of Islam as a religion; it is the return of Islam as a, a political power. Yeah, uh, and this generates conflict. So you have a return of Islam combined with a crisis of Islamic civilization. So both the return and the crisis generate conflicts. And these conflicts start in the world of Islam, and then they are spilled over to the rest of the world, among other things, uh, through migration. So the three million migrants who came in the past uh, two and a half years, they bring all conflicts from the world of Islam with them to Europe, to the heart of Europe. Uh, so there are two ways for dealing with this, or three ways. One way is ignore it, there are no conflicts. And those who speak about conflicts are accused of being evil people. So this is a, a ignoration is a, an option. Another option is polarization. So you have right-wing movements, anti-migration movements, right-wing movements in Europe. Um, stereotypizing Muslims and presenting Muslims as enemies, which is bad, very bad. And the third position, this is my position, I acknowledge the conflict. There is a conflict, and you cannot overlook it. You must be blind if you overlook it. And overlooking is damaging, because if you overlook something, it does not disappear. The conflict are there, and they will stay. And I acknowledge these conflicts, and look for ways for dealing with them. And uh, dialogue is, for me, one of these means for dealing with conflicts. Uh, and dialogue has to be understood differently than the church does. Uh, people of the church uh, refer to dialogue when Christians and Muslims talk to each other. And when they talk to each other, they lie, and they do not tell the truth. And they say, you are nice. And in return, the others say, you are nice too. But this is not dialogue. Yeah. Dialogue for me is identifying the problems, identifying the conflicts, and looking for ways for dealing with them. And the term for that is conflict resolution. Mm -hmm.